Welcome to AzureTeach.net. In this video, let us understand the concept of authorization code with proof key for code exchange authorization flow using Azure AD and also practically generate the access token using the Postman tool. Just a few seconds of theory. We are going to see this practically later in the video. PKC stands for proof key for code exchange and it is also called as Pixie in shorter form. It was created to prevent cross-site request forgery and this is needed for mobile and desktop apps and also recommended for SPA applications. Let us understand this with a real life example. So this is not happening anywhere in the world but just assume that this is what happening. So here we have Adam Robert and he need an account from JP Morgan Chase. So he went into the bank and says I am Adam Robert and need an account. And bank provides the account without taking any information like SSN or date of birth. Later Adam need some information on his account and he calls to the customer care. So at that time the customer care representative does not know whether he is a legitimate Adam Robert or not and also there can be multiple Adam Roberts having account with JP Morgan Chase. Let us understand the same scenario again. Now when Adam needs an account with the bank, the bank asks him for SSN and date of birth and provides an account and later when Adam needs the information on his account, when he calls to the customer care, the customer care representative asks him for last four digits of SSN and date of birth for verification. So based on this, the customer care representative can know whether he is disclosing the information to the legitimate Adam or not. Now let us understand PKCA with the similar concept that we have seen before. So before PKCA we used to have implicit grant flow where the client application provides a redirect URL which is registered with Azure AD. And when the client application sends the request, server validates the request for the client ID and client secret and it generates a token and gives the token back to the redirect URL. So here the server doesn't know whether a legitimate client is listening at the redirect URL. Because in the mobile applications world, there can be multiple mobile apps listening to the same redirect URI and here we don't have any control even if some other app listening to the same URL can steal the token and impersonate the user. Here comes the PKC concept to mitigate the issue. So first, the client application requests a code by providing redirect URL and also a secret code that we call as code challenge that is only known to the client tab. And it is similar to the SSN which is generally confidential. And here the client app is saying that, hey authorization server, if I come to you and request an access token, challenge me with this secret code. So after that, the server validates the request and returns a auth code to redirect URL. So here still the redirect is happening and the other apps which are listening to the same URL can know this code. But later, the client application sends another request to authorization server. And here, this is not a redirect request. This is a post request. And inside this, the client application includes the secret code. So this secret code will be sent to the authorization server and authorization server returns the access token only if the secret code which was used to generate the authorization code matches with the secret code in the current request. So here it is like the bank customer care asking for the SSN. So here the other mobile application doesn't know the secret code and cannot steal the access token. Let us understand these concepts practically. So here I'm going to the app registrations and creating a new app registration and I am naming it as PKCE client app. And 
I'm clicking on register. So here the app registration is created. I'm going into the authentication section and here I'm adding a platform and I'm choosing single page application. And here it is asking for a redirect URI. We are using Postman for testing this concept. So I'm giving the Postman redirect URI over here. So this is the URI where the Postman listened to. And here I'm choosing access token and also ID token and clicking on configure. Now I'm going to certificates and secrets and here I'm generating a new client secret. And we must copy this client secret because if you come back here again, it won't show you the secret. Then I'm going to the API permissions. And here, if you see by default added permissions on Microsoft Graph with user.read permissions, if you have any other API, you can simply add a permission over here and select the APIs and you can configure. And if you need that, there are plenty of videos available in my channel. You can go through them. For this video, we will be generating the token for calling Microsoft Graph API. Now let us generate a token using implicit grant flow. I'm going to overview endpoints and here I'm taking this particular endpoint. This is OA 2.0 authorization endpoint and I'm going to postman and here in the authorization section I have selected OAuth 2.0 and here I have selected request headers and later here I have selected this checkbox which says authorized using browser and here I have chosen the implicit grant flow and here if you see this is the URL that we have configured with the app registration also and this is where the postman listens for the token and here I am configuring the auth URL that we have copied and here we have to give the client ID. So I'm going to the app registration and here we have the client ID. And here we have to provide the scope and we have the user dot read scope. So here in postman I'm giving user dot read and after that here I'm clicking on get new access token. So it asks you for the login and this is the first time I'm logging in. So I have to provide the consent. So I'm selecting this and clicking on accept. So now it generated a token and asking me to open postman. Uh, in my system, the postman is having problem. So it is not directly taking the token. But if you see, we got the token over here. So this is the access token that we can use to call the APA. So here the token, the access token is directly returned to this particular URL. So now in my machine only the postman is listening and assume there is some other app which is also listening to same address which is also inter intercepting the same URL and listening to the access token. And the authorization server doesn't know if the token was di disclosed to the legitimate client app or not. Here I am selecting a new tab going to authorization and here I am selecting OAuth 2.2. And after that this is where we will be getting auth code and here I am selecting authorization code with PKCE. And here we have to give the auth URL. I'm going to the app registration overview endpoints. And here I'm selecting the authorized endpoint and I'm configuring it over here. And after that, here we have access token URL. I'm going back to the app registration and here I'm selecting the token endpoint, going back to postman and configuring it over here. And we need the client ID. So here we have the client ID. So I am taking this and configuring it over here. And here we have to give the client secret. I have pasted the client secret that we have generated earlier. And here we can choose SHA-256 or 
the plain text so here i am choosing sha 256 and here we have to provide the code verifier so here the code verifier can be uh, any random text you can give anything and uh, it should be from 43 to 126 characters like that so here i am giving a b c d so the length of this should be 43 to 128 characters i just typed a b c d and just copying it so that it will be beyond uh, the 43 characters generally this code verifier should be something like this some random text but for our understanding i am giving this simple text and here i am giving the scope as user dot read and now i am clicking on generate new access to if you see here we got the code and i am copying this when you select sha 256 over here this code verifier will be hashed with this algorithm or it will be sent as a plain text so here i have an example so here i have used this plain text to generate the code and here i have mentioned the code challenge method as plain so this is not hashed this was sent as is but if i select sha 256 this code verifier text was hashed to this now let us generate a new access token using the authorization code that we got just now i'm clicking on a new tab and here i'm selecting post and here i'm going to body and selecting form url encoded and here i'm mentioning redirect underscore url this must be the redirect URI that we have used to generate the authorization code and here there won't be any redirects but still we have to provide this as we have used this while generating the auth code and after that here we have to mention grant type so grant type must be authorization underscore code and after that we have to mention client underscore id and here we have the client id and after that here we have to mention code underscore verifier so here we have the code verifier and we can mention this in the plain text though we have hashed it while generating the auth code so here i am mentioning the code verifier and after that here we have to provide the code so here I am providing the code that we have generated before and the URL should be the token URL that we have used it over here. So I am copying this and pasting it over here on click of send it won't give us the access token. So here it says tokens issued for the single page application client type may only be redeemed via cross origin request so here what it is saying is as we have defined this as a single page application we must pass one header to prevent cross origin request that is the course so here we have to mention origin header and you can give anything so here i am giving postman and now clicking on send so now we got the access token and also the refresh token so here we are using the authorization code flow and here there are no redirects so if i hit the send button again it won't give us the token because a access token can only be redeemed once so as already we have got the token it won't work and also uh, let me generate uh, a new access token to show you one issue i have passed the video and created a new access token so if i change the code verifier like if it is not the same as the code verifier that we have used before so i have added this number and if i hit the send button now also it won't return the access token so here it is saying code verifier does not match the code challenge supplied so here only the client app which has the code verifier can redeem the token so if i remove this and hit send again will get the access token that is all in this video if this video is helpful to you please like share and subscribe to the channel thank you